probably two hours split up uh, over a bit of time. I'll be doing a bunch of things at once. Okay, yeah. Zero. Yeah, actually as of right now my phone's off. So I'll have it on later on to pick up when my dad gets here. Or of that. See ya. Ooh, I am not on social media the evening before. That is not my, I just stay off of it. I usually, um, the night before I like to like just decompress as much as possible. So I just want to turn the computer off. I'll watch some really crappy TV, don't get me wrong. But um, in terms of social media, I try to just stay off of it the night before. What is the crappiest of the crappy TV that you watch? Um, I like the Kardashians, but we don't have a TV at home. So like when we get to a hotel room, it's like, oh man, I get to go crazy and see all that stuff. Or I, some of the cooking shows are always entertaining. I'm, I don't know, watching them bite into something is always so entertaining. I don't know why. <laughs> Ours is, oh, none. <laughs> Definitely none. The evening before the race, um, I'll probably spend two hours on it because there's nothing else to do because you're just sitting there with your feet up. But um, I try and turn it off at least now before I'm going to go to bed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, possibly none. Trying something new right before I start, like eating something I shouldn't have, and that, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the mile, when you I cut someone off during the final hundred meters, it felt pretty bad about that. So. Well, I think especially well in the marathon, especially the first thing that comes to mind is dropping any bottles. It's such a mistake for me because my the sugar levels are just such a thing. And then usually I get that like just it feels like all the energy is drained out of you because it's just like crashing so hard. I I really can't think of anything much worse. It just feels like you're just being completely zonked of energy. Oh boy, going out too hard. Uh, I did that in Philadelphia a few weeks ago. It was, it was warmer than I was anticipating. Um, I was at my peak of mileage as well, and I just went out way too hard. And I thought that I could keep up the feeling, and I just went out with too much confidence. So it's just like, I don't know, you learn from it. Um, it, it was before the race in Virginia Beach, before a, a marathon. I uh, had a questionable meal choice the evening before and had to stop during the race to go to the bathroom, so that wasn't much fun. What did you eat? Uh, it, was, it was pasta, but it was, it was from this kind of dodgy place. The place I wanted to go was closed, so it was a whole mess. I was not feeling good the next morning. I guess it depends how bad the GI issues are. <laughs> um, but I think the sting of the close to the PR will definitely stay with me a lot longer than the GI issues. <laughs> and PB. GI issues during the race of PB. I mean, I'd take a PB no matter what, even if it was GI issues. I'd, I'd be okay with running well, but missing the, the time by a second. Uh, so GI issues, you could go with that, yeah. <laughs> oh man. A PB is a PB, I'll take it. GI issues throughout the marathon. <laughs> I've had that, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I think I can see that question coming. Yes. <laughs> Answer coming. PB Anything for a PB, right? Yeah. Uh, under five, for sure. Okay. Give me either. I'll compete. Under five the morning of the race. Okay. Yeah. For a half marathon or a marathon? I mean, probably like five degrees, yeah. Uh, I would much rather it be really, really cold. Yeah. Uh, Southfish Creek Provincial Park in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, Pacific Spirit Park in uh, Vancouver. Yeah. Nice choice. Yeah. <laughs> Centennial Park, Toronto. Oh, I've gone to run in Mont uh in Montreal and in Quebec before. Um, just beautiful trails, um, just covered in trees and uh, I just, anytime I can just kind of disengage and just be in the nature and be in the moment, I, I go crazy. I love it. It's just uh, so beautiful. Back home, Black Creek, Vancouver Island. I love it there. Vancouver, Jericho Beach. Man, I feel like I'm doing runs all day. Uh, I, I guess morning, that's usually the first one for me. It's usually when I feel the best. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, early morning. I am an early morning person. I love 4 a.m. is like my favorite time. I love mornings. Like, 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. is the time I usually wake up and then get started on my day. Um, and I'm, I'm much more uh, chipper in the morning than I am in the evening. Try to talk to me at like 8 p.m. and I'm like a zombie. So 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Let's go. do it! If anybody's awake to talk to you, then. Exactly. Anytime. 
evening before it gets too dark. Yeah. I'm not a morning person actually. <laughs> Sunrise. I love running, not early morning, but morning. Yeah. Uh, definitely beer. Beer and burger. Is there a place yeah. that... Which I'm probably going to have that anyway, but yeah. <laughs> Is there a place that you like to go specifically in Toronto? Uh, in Toronto, I'm not sure. There's a really great place in, in London, uh, Milo's Craft Beer or something. And uh, yeah, they've got an amazing beer selection and a delicious burger. So I'm hoping to go there uh, Sunday night or Monday. Uh, I'll probably hug my husband. He's with me all. Um, he's been with me through the ups and downs of everything. Um, call some of my my family and let them know what happened. But um, to celebrate, we'll probably go out to dinner and just. Um, we have a lot of friends and family we get home too that are just really excited. So we'll to share with them as well. It's always fun. Uh, a burger. <laughs> How are yes. you going to celebrate um, with your family? You've got two girls, so how yes. are you going to celebrate when you go back home? Usually they put something together for me. It's really fun. Like when I came home from Victoria a couple of weeks ago, they put together um, like flowers and a little congratulations thing. It's really, yeah, just kind of fun. Yeah.